Cool. Hey, we've got a really uh, a really good topic today, and it's um, it's going to be fun just to kind of jump in and really explore it, actually. Uh, but let me just check while we're getting ourselves settled. Do we have any new people here? If we do, let me know if you're brand new, if it's maybe your first or second or third or fourth week. I want to say a big welcome to all the new people. You're in the right place. You made a great decision. Welcome. Hey, Erica. Welcome if you're new. Look, hey, if you're new, the most important thing is that uh, that you're here, and that's fantastic. But also jump into the, the uh, introductory start here section in uh, in the Magnet Mind University. You'll find a, a lot in there about the foundational um, work, but also you will um, you'll get a, an ebook download of my book, so you better grab that, and uh, you better get your choices clear. You know, and that's really important is to to choose what it is you're going to manifest in the world. So so make sure you do that. Second, try to make it to one of these sessions, uh, live sessions every every single week. That's a really good idea. It keeps you in good rhythm. Uh, and we'll have a great session today. If you don't have choices, uh, you know, written out in the right way yet, that's all right. Um, you can go with the core choices uh, today. So look, let's jump straight in. Uh, I'm excited uh, about the topic. So uh, what I've got to, to jump into is, is the understanding that, that our experience we're having is coupled with a belief. The belief is creating the experience. The experience is creating the, the belief. And, and typically, uh, if we're not having our choices flow in the way that we want to, there's a, a conflict in experience and belief. So the experience we're having is not the experience that we're choosing to have. So for example, uh, many of us might be having a stuck experience in life, you know, or, or an oscillating experience where we're not able to get uh, the choices to manifest or, or to produce or to, to, to invent the way we want our life to be. And, and I remember this very clearly. For the longest time, I wanted to have a successful business. And, and I remember having to face the reality of being nearly a million dollars in debt. It was my third failed business and, and just full of so much frustration and so much, you know, angst and, and, and uh, these, these ideas of like, well, why, you know, why is it that, that I can't have it? You know, was, and, and I was going over and over and over and over in my mind, like, why, why can't I get there? And it felt that sometimes uh, in, in that period, I, you know, I was, I was in good momentum and other times I was stuck or had completely fallen apart. And, and it's not that um, this was happening in every area of my life. It just seemed to be in this one area and it was very frustrating. And it, it was like uh, somehow I would keep finding my way back to the same, uh, you know, situation again and again and again and it, and it was really weird to witness you know you kind of step back you maybe you do some meditations or you do work and you go you know look i've done the same thing in, in my weight loss journey again and again and again i've done the same thing I'm, I'm i'm in a different relationship but the same person or my business is or my money is or my this and it's like the same thing just keeps happening and and somehow uh we're able to continually create the same experiences and it's really fascinating, actually, because all of us here, we know that we have an unconscious uh, and our unconscious or subconscious has an agenda and it has one agenda. And that one agenda is to survive and to keep you alive. And so it's got this idea that whatever it's already survived, it, it should uh, it should just go get more of that. Right. And and, uh, and unfortunately, we have this other part of us that, uh, you know, isn't very satisfied with that answer. True. Like one part of us is like, well, if I've already survived it, I'll go do more of that. And uh, and I know I'll survive it again. You know. It's like, well, wow, that's. That's uh, that's really quite something. Now, what's fascinating is. That the more threatening. An experience is to your existence the more the unconscious is focused on that experience. So if you if you imagine and let's personify it a little bit, imagine you have this, uh, you know, this part of your personality 
And it's only got one goal it is to ensure that you survive, like it's a soldier. And uh, it realizes that in order to survive, you need to belong and be safe. And so anything that threatens belonging or safety becomes something that it had to overcome, right? It had to overcome it. It had to survive it. It had to figure out a way through it. And so whatever that is, ends up having a high survival value. Does that make sense? I want, I want to share this with you. you. You cannot survive being happy. You cannot survive abundance. You cannot survive um, joy. Why can't you survive abundance? Um, and joy and why can't you survive that the reason you can't survive it is there's nothing threatening about any of those feelings so you, so there's no survival value to the unconscious does this make sense give me a yes it makes there's no value to it because the, the unconscious just goes well you know of course i mean there's no yeah happy was easy there's no threatening it's not threatening to um, belonging or safety so the unconscious not even worried about it. It's not where all the experience that, that you feel connected and happy and love and supported, that do, that's not a bother to the unconscious. What's a bother to the unconscious is if something's threatening. So here's what we see is we see people repeating the same experiences over and over and over again that are threatening to their belonging, threatening to uh, their safety, but non-fatal. They're non-fatal. So I just want to do a quick a quick exercise here uh, with you all. So you can use the chat box. You won't uh, you won't need this uh, in, in in the future. You, you, so you use the chat box or whatever you like. But but you might like to write it down. So what I'd like you to do is just list out six to eight or you know uh feelings or states that you you you're likely to experience in the upcoming week just just different feelings and states and, and make them both positive and negative okay so and, and just write just some say so you know fun and joy and love and frustrated and angry and confused just just that if, if you were to make a bet uh, in the next week, what would be six or eight feelings or states that um, that you could, you know, you'd place a solid bet on, and you'd say, "Yeah, I think that I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm going to, to feel those," and just uh, and just do that for me. Make sure that they're both um, positive and uh, and negative. All right, cool. Yeah, thanks, everyone. I see a lot coming in. It's great. Yeah, just just six to eight that um, that you would guarantee you'll feel. Yeah, you'll feel maybe peace, maybe inspired, maybe frustrated, maybe lost, maybe happy, maybe sad, embarrassed, connected. Um, grateful, tired, you know, sore in the body, all, all sorts. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is that we have all sorts of experiences in, in life and but then we have a belief 
that actually puts color to that experience. Okay. And it puts puts uh, meaning on that experience. That meaning then adds to the experience. Okay, so so belief and experience are connected together. So, for example, if you're sitting there with you know damp, cold, wet feet and damp, cold shoes, that's the experience. Now. One person may be having an experience of that experience of, oh, I wish I had, you know, better, better shoes and footwear, and I wish I lived in a warmer place that wasn't raining. Another person could be sitting by uh, the fire after a day of skiing. They have this, and then they could be uh, thinking about the most amazing day they just had. And so they've both got the same experience, but then the belief around that experience is creating meaning in a different experience. They both have cold feet, but there's this whole other thing. Does that make sense? There's this whole experience belief cycle, right? Someone might have no money in their bank account and feel absolutely free and, and you know, uh, you know, happy about that, trusting the universe and others to provide, and someone else have no money in their bank account and be terrified about what's happening next. You see, it's the same experience, but then their beliefs are manifesting a different experience, which manifests a different experience. And, and so none of those emotions or states that you put down are necessarily uh, good or bad, right? They just, they just are. But if you were to look at your list, uh, out of all of them, which ones would you uh, say are negative? And I just want you to take the ones that you would say are unwanted uh, or negative, right? And, and I just want you to, to write those ones out yourself and, and just pull those out. See, it's quite a interesting thing that we have experiences that we wish we didn't have. Why would we torment ourselves with uh, experiences that we wouldn't want to have? Interesting, isn't it? We all do it. So just go through and circle any that you would say are unwanted or negative. And so if you've been following along, we, you know, we, we wrote down a bunch of states that we're for sure going to feel in the next week. We're now uh, highlighting or circling or pulling out or rewriting um, the ones that are unwanted or negative. And so you, you must ask yourself, okay, well, that's interesting. So why is it that I'm going to feel those uh, in the next week? I, I mean, it's, it's a bit of a wonder. And the reason is is that those feelings that are unwanted or negative have survival value. They have survival value. And they are, they are experiences or, or beliefs that we actually know we can survive. And our, and our creature self has decided that we if we can just survive those, then we can shift into a place of hope a place of uh, creation. But what happens is for some reason, our unconscious continually wants to find those same feelings over and over and over again, because it believes they're survivable. Does this make sense, Tim? Give me a yes if you're getting it. We want uh, our unconscious keeps on picking those out and just to survive them. And that's that's really interesting. And so what if it believes it needs to survive those, it creates keeps creating experiences that are in alignment with that. Because it knows how to survive it. So the belief is I know how to survive feeling frustrated or I know how to survive feeling broke. I know how to survive being embarrassed. Being broke, being embarrassed, uh, being frustrated. These, these feelings actually threaten my survival, but I can survive them. Does that make sense? It threatens either belonging or safety. 
If you look at any of those negative feelings, they're based on a based on a premise that 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 there is something threatening your survival. So to the unconscious, it has survival value. And so what happens is we go through life in this, or we go through our creative journey in this strange conflict where one part of us wants to wants to go and thrive and, and, and have all these new experiences. And this other part of us just keeps wanting to find things to get frustrated by, or just keeps wanting to find things, uh, find people to feel rejected from, or keep finding, you see that? Or keep finding it, keep finding it, keep finding it. And until we, we shine the light on it and go, this, this, this isn't what I want to do anymore. And so we have these invisible instructions that we don't even know are there. And I'll, and I'll show you some, some of mine that uh, find, find ways to feel frustrated uh, that you haven't achieved enough. And that's coupled with an idea, if you achieve enough, you, you'll finally be free of it. You know, uh, find ways to feel embarrassed, which is coupled with an idea that there's there's ways uh, to to improve yourself to finally be perfect. And so we have these invisible structures that continually, out of everything we could possibly experience, these invisible beliefs. They keep creating experience, and these experiences then reinforce our beliefs. And, and, and then we're just held in this structure. And this belief and experience wheel just goes round and around and around and around and around and around until, you know, you kind of pop out of it and you go, well, why do I keep doing that? You know, why do I keep doing it? So invisible beliefs. So if you think about a belief, a, a belief, you, you can't really hold it. It's not like a, a glass of water. And, and so these beliefs are invisible. And, and so what is a belief? And so a belief is really an instruction of how we think the world is, right? Like that's a that's what we believe. We believe it. So that's how it is. We believe it. Now, invisible beliefs operate in hidden parts of our mind, and they can be made visible uh, through what we do here. But, but what you must understand is that your, your current reality, uh, your current experience isn't a mistake, right? It isn't a mistake. It's, it's, your unconscious designing a world that it knows how to survive. And the, the sad thing is, is it figured out how to survive in this world based off conditions and circumstances that you fell into between the ages of, you know, one and four and, and decisions you made back then. You said this is survivable and you have not changed it. You just simply never changed it. You said, well, that's what's survivable. So we, all we do is we keep creating a different character to play mom, to play dad, to play society, to play friends, to play this, to play that. And we keep finding the same thing. So we create the same world to survive from it. Unless we consciously choose to upgrade. 
unless we consciously choose that we want to have a different experience, a different a way of being. And we consciously say, I want to completely recode all, all the structure of my experience and beliefs uh, so that I can have it a different way. And, and the thing to understand is there's nothing to fix in this old world. It's, it's not fixable. It just was one way and we're going to create a new way. So the first thing that we must do when, when creating a, a new way is we must answer the question, what would or how would you like it to be? You know, how would you like it to be? And such a sweet, simple question, isn't it? So how would you like it? What, how would you like it to be? What would you like to create out of all the possibilities, how would you like it to be? What would you like to feel? What would you like to create? What would you like to experience? How would you like it? Would you like to have loads of money and abundance and flash cars and multiple houses? Would you like to have a business? Would you like to write books or poetry or make art or music? Or would you like to have someone else pay for everything and just chill out? How would you like it to be? And, and that's just like such a simple question. But, but in its simplicity, when you really sit with it, it's quite, it's quite a uh, confronting question for a lot of people. You know? Because they can say it, oh, I would like it to be like this but they don't live it because in truth, their unconscious is not actually going to let them have it. So there's two types of, uh, of rejection in our invisible beliefs. There's a rejection of the present reality or there's a rejection of the desired reality. So many people are just in love with the wanting of something and in love with getting away from something. They're not actually going to recreate their life. Really. And, and the, the way that I know that they're not actually doing it is that their experience of life isn't changing at all because you must be it to see it. Your experience must have that, that it's not actually changing. There's, there's no reason why you haven't got it except for the reasons you're holding on to. And there's no benefit in holding on to those unless you choose to have benefit from it. And it's, it's just a really great conversation to go, you know what, I can just choose to have it how I want. And if I'm not having it how I want, well, there's something in my structure that I need to reorganize so that I can have it. And, and, and that's it. And, and so the, 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 first, the first thing is, is you must decide and design what it is you want it to be. What it is you want it to be, how you want to have it. And you must fully commit to that. You must have choices. You must set your land of plenty. You must, you must design it. You must be the architect of your life and go, this is how I want it to be. This is how I would like it to feel. This is how it is going to feel. These are the things that I would like to have. This is my experience. When you truly make that decision of how you want it to be, you are going to be faced with your unconscious objection to it. You will be. And that is to be expected because your unconscious has a job for you to continually create the experiences you've already survived. So if you are choosing it to be different, your unconscious will literally come in to let you know about how that's not for you. It will make up some wild stories. You don't deserve that. 
as if there is something, uh, there's some measuring stick of what who deserves what, <laughs> right? Or we'll say, well, you, you've got to fix this about yourself. As if there's not somebody else who already has it that hasn't fixed themselves. You're not good enough. You've got to be smarter. You've got to be better. Or, you know, if you have that, everyone's going to reject you. It's going to just make up this sort of, you don't know enough. It's going to be unsafe to have it. How do you even know that's what you want? What about this and this and this and this and this? There's so much that the unconscious will do to come in with a story to just stop it. And that is when we get to start this work. Does that make sense, everyone? That's that's when you start going right now. This is what must be must be shifted. See, if you have chosen how you want life to be, if you choose it, this is how I want it to be. All you must do is rearrange your consciousness and then take the action. That's it. And every story, everything that's there, that's in the way, that pops up. That's all the mechanism that that is this cosmic joke that hum, humanity has uh, had to deal with, which is, hey, we'll give you a uh, an unconscious fear based part of your brain, like all the animals on the planet, but also we're going to expand your brain, give you this frontal lobe that is uh, convinced there's a meaning of life and convinced that life is about love and joy and freedom and the ideal. And we're going to put those together in one system, one based on fear and love and a uh, fear and, and, and scarcity and survival, and one based on uh, joy and abundance and meaning. And we're going to see if these two things can exist in one, in one system. And I think it's been like a, you know, at least a 300,000 year joke uh, a, a comedy uh, that that someone is sitting back and watching and going, "Gosh, that is funny to to see that happening." This, I mean, this the 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 cosmic the cosmic joke. Uh, this idea that we we have the same you know aspects in our consciousness that uh, you know a lizard has and runs away from anything scary and uh, you know you you see a. Uh, a lion just you know ripping a buffalo apart without any remorse just the the you know the the lioness she's just hungry uh we we have that aspect in our consciousness and then also to have another aspect of about you know love and joy and abundance and meaning and purpose it, it, the, they couldn't be more different right they couldn't be more different they are polar opposites but but that's what's in our system and and as we become more conscious, we get to uh, we get to realize that uh, that that is that is what it is. That there is this part of us that is trying to keep everything the same, and there is all sorts of instructions to find experiences and uh, and results and people to keep everything basically the same. And then there's a whole nother part of us full of dreams and ambitions and ideas. That they want it to be different, and and to be a super conscious creator, it's about stepping in to those creations, to those manifestations that you want, really choosing them, and knowing that your whole unconscious is going to fight you, and to let go, and then have and then manifest that and then go on the process again and that that's that's what you're going to go through here if your unconscious isn't kicking up a fight uh then what you're going for is not really what your heart wants So let's um, let's bring some of these unconscious um, beliefs out. 
let's let's do that. Let, let's get into to an end result. Because as we know, there are five steps to creating. The first is we must choose our end results. The second is that we must be in the emotion of it. By emotion, we mean experience. Right, we mean experience, we mean emotion. Does that make sense? So step one is you choose it. Step two, you get into it, you become it now. Step three is you acknowledge where you are. You acknowledge your starting point. You don't try to hide from it. You don't deny it. You acknowledge where you are. Step four is we recode. And then step five, we take action. And, and these, are the, these are the five steps. There, there is no creation without having to let go of your unconscious. There, there, there is no new place to go without having to, to, to let go of your unconscious. And, uh, and anyone that tries to tell you that there, that there is simply doesn't understand the, what's going on. They, they just sim they simply don't. And it, it's such an important thing to realize. So let's, let's ask a really interesting question for everyone here. What is it that you would really like? And what would how would you really like it to be? Like, how would you like life to be? Really? How would you choose it? You got it right now, let's say so how would you choose it? And you know, if you have um if you have choices like me written out, um, you know, you've got but how would you choose it? And just just think about that for a second. And then I want to ask ask a second question. So so write out how I would like it is. I'd like to have you know tons of money or a family of my own or you know great business or a charity or feel on purpose. Right. This is what I would like. Whatever it is. And then ask yourself uh, what what would having that do for you? What would having that do for you? Hmm. So, so if I had that, what would having that do for me? Hmm. So here's the next piece. How will you know you have it? So how will you know when you have it? So what you would like is this. This is what it would do for me. And I would know I have it because, because of what? Yeah. So what you would like is this, and this is what it would do for you. And here's how you know you would have it. So, so what stops you? So what stops you having that? So let me uh, let me read out what some of us have decided stops us. Uh, where is it? Self sabotage, money, a brain on the hamster wheel, fear. Fear stops me. Feeling overwhelmed. Fear. Judgment of others, not believing, money. I, I'm not built to do this. I want it now, fear of failure, insecurity, fear, lack of self-belief, feeling like it's too much, feeling inadequate, what others say, 
don't believe it can happen, freezes me. Fear of failure, stubbornness, not enough money, doubt, my ability to find clients, habits, judgment, self-doubt, fear, worry, fear of judgment, fear, lack of belief, worthiness. Now, uh, I'll stop reading them out. Who notices a pattern in all these other humans? Um, as I was reading those out, did anyone notice a pattern of what, what humans say stop them? Fear, doubt, worry, right? Fear, doubt, worry. Fear, doubt, worry. Isn't it true? It's all the unconscious, right? There's 200 of us on here, all writing in, and here's what stops me. Oh, it's fear, fear of it, fear of it, fear of it. Why the heck are we so scared of, of having what we want? Why are we scared of having what we want? What bad thing would happen if we actually had what it is we want? Isn't that silly? We're not going for what we want because we're scared of not having it. We're scared of it because we're all so much more excited about thinking that we want it and making up a story than actually having it and going for it. It's illogical to be scared of having lots of money. It's illogical to be scared of living our dreams. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Does it make sense to them? Why would, I, why would anyone be scared of it? It, makes, it doesn't make sense. Unless, unless you're an unconscious. The unconscious goes, well, I've never survived that. I've survived this. So the only way it makes sense is that it has survival value to not have it. True? The unconscious doesn't work in logic. It goes, I know how to be here and I know how to continually not have enough money. I know that I don't die from that. And so this amazing part of you literally is creating your experience. This part of you is creating your experience because when I just asked you, I want you just to think about this. I said, so what stops you having it? What stops you having what you want? And you all said it was fear, worry, doubts. That's it. Noah. No one said it was talent or opportunity or that, that it exists. Our unconscious is continually wanting to keep things the same. And, and so the invisible instruction that's holding you stuck is this instruction to keep everything the same. Is that true? That's what it is. And it's going to throw up some fear, some worry, but its instruction is keep things the same as always been. And, and you can take that to the bank, hey? You really can. Like that's when you understand that it's, it's not true, that it's just something that you decided when you were a youngster and it's not actually true. When you, when you really, when you really, sit in that you know it's not actually true it's just an experience that i had you know and uh it doesn't serve me so i can just you know let it go when you really really get that you just you just simply just let it go yeah you just you just can't You just, you simply can. If you've been able to hold on to it for so long, you've also got the ability to let it go. And, you know, this week, I really want you to, to consider that. Really consider it. Really sit, sit with that idea that I can just let it go. I can just have it the way I want. And any feelings that, have me believe that I can't have it the way I want, 
It is just my unconscious trying to serve me and keep me alive. And actually that unconscious is, has just got some incorrect training because I'm clearly going to be able to survive having lots of money, or I'm clearly going to be able to survive having a successful business. Like it's, I, I know. And so you actually know better and you, you, you do what all the alchemist says is you rise, rise up to a higher vibration. You go, yeah, look, I see, I understand, I hear you, I get it, but it's just, it's just not accurate. And, uh, you know, those who's done create a course in create a course, we don't do recode because in create a course, we just simply rise up. We go, yeah, no, we just, just, this stuff's not, not it.